Now we're going to look at how to work with the elastic load balancer. So the elastic load balancer is used to load traffic between a set of EC2 instances. This is so that the load on the application is not directed towards just one instance on its own. So let's look at how to basically create an elastic load balancer. But before we do that, we need to do a couple of prerequisites to ensure that our elastic load balancer works as it should. For the purpose of this demo, we had one Windows instance. I've gone ahead and created another Windows instance in another AZ. So I have a Windows A instance in the US West 2B and another Windows instance that's Windows B in US West 2C. So what it does that I now have instances in various availability zones. So even if one zone were to go down, I would still have the application running on the server in the other zone. So this is good for building fault tolerant applications. So this is the first prerequisite. I have actually created two Windows instances on availability zones. The next step, we have to go to each server and make sure that if they are part of the same or different security groups, let's go to the security groups. We have to make sure that the inbound allows port 80. And this is because the elastic load balancer communicates with its servers on port 80. So we have to ensure that this inbound rule is available on both servers. The third aspect, we need to ensure a web server is actually running on the servers itself. So if it's a Windows server, we should install IS or any other web server which is listening on port 80. This is because the elastic load balancer will ping the server on this port and see if it gets a required response back. So you need to have something listening on that port on the server. So what I have done is that I have actually gone ahead and installed IS on one of the servers and I've left the ser other server as it is. This is because I want to show you a difference and this is something you will see when we actually create the elastic load balancer. So on one of the servers, I actually have my IS installed. I've put an index.html file on the default root path of the web server, which just has a simple text of hello world. On the other server, I don't even have IS installed. And you can see that because I am actually getting a timeout. So I have the Windows instance up and running. It's just that I don't have IS installed. So now with this done, let's go ahead and create our elastic load balancer. To create the elastic load balancer, we need to go into the load balance section and let's click on create a load balancer. Now we can create two types of load balancers. One is a classic load balancer and the other one is the application load balancer. So we can choose the classic one for now just to showcase how it basically works. Now, if you want to use, or if you had new gen type of applications, so for example, if you had containers like Dockers, it's always preferred to use the HD, the application load balancer. For now, let's choose the classic load balancer and click on continue. Now in the next step, we need to basically choose where the load balancer should be created in. I'll choose my default VPC. I need to give a name for my load balancer. You can create an internal load balancer. So the internal load balancers, you should distribute traffic between your databases, just as an example. So you can distribute traffic between your private subnets. This elastic load balancer, which we are creating is actually distributing traffic on a public subnet that is between web servers. So we will not choose this option. We will leave it as it is. Then we have the listener configuration. So I said that the elastic load balancer will be listening on port 80. So you also have to make sure that your web servers are also listening on port 80. And that is why we did the security configuration on the servers beforehand. Now we can choose an existing security group. This is for the elastic load balancer. I will choose the web server. So this allows port 80 and I'll click on next. I'll click on the configuring health check. So now the health check is what the elastic load balancer will use to check if the EC2 instance behind the elastic load balancer is healthy or not. One thing to note is that if you are serving traffic of an elastic load balancer and any one of the instances behind the ELB becomes unhealthy, immediately ELB will stop sending requests to the EC2 instance. So here you can choose what is the protocol you want to use for the health check. You have various list of protocols available. I will use the normal HTTP. I will use the ping port of port 80 and the ping path of index.html. I have actually gone ahead and I said created an index.html page on one of my web servers. That's what you saw over here. The response timeout is how much the ELB will wait to get a response back from the EC2 instance. 
Next is the interval. So this is the amount of time that the ELB will actually go between each ping to the server, to the backend servers. And then you have the unhealthy threshold and the healthy threshold. So how many times should ELB decide on whether an EC2 instance is unhealthy or not? Now let's click on next. Here we need to add the EC2 instance as part of our ELB. So let's choose Windows A and Windows B. So these are in two availability zones, which is a good thing. The cross load balancer will ensure that the traffic is evenly distributed between the instances behind the elastic load balancer. The connection draining. Now what happens, suppose if you had an instance which is currently serving traffic on an ELB, but then it needs to either be removed, the EC2 instance, or becomes unhealthy. Then these existing connections will have a connection draining. So the ELB will wait for 300 seconds for the EC2 instance to make sure that existing connections or existing requests are adhered to before removing the EC2 instance altogether. This is because if you had to drop the EC2 instance suddenly when it becomes unhealthy, then the existing requests will all get terminated. So this is kind of a time given or a cooldown period given for the EC2 instance to ensure that any requests which are currently in flight are adhered to and the response is given back to the user. Let me now click on next to add any tags. I'll just leave the tags as it is and click on review and create. Finally, let's click on the create button to create our load balancer. Let's click on close. Now the load balancer is actually coming into effect. Now you will see that the status of both the instance is out of service. That is because as the ELB is being created, it still has to do its health checks to ensure that the Windows instance is healthy or not. Let's wait for a couple of minutes and come back when we have some sort of status update on the instances. Now I actually waited for a couple of minutes, I've done a refresh and now I can see the status of one of the servers is actually moved on to in-service. This is the Windows A. Now why is this become in-service and why is the one other one still out of service? And that's simply because in one of the servers I said I have my IS installed on the web server and I have an index.html file so the health check or the ping is actually working for the server and that is why it comes into in-service. Since the other server does not have IS install, it is still out of service. So the only reason I didn't install IS on one of the other servers was just to show the status change that happens when you have a valid health check for your EC2 instance. So this was just a quick thing on how to basically work with uh, Elastic Load Balancer. We have a whole list of options available for the Elastic Load Balancer. You can actually change the uh, connection draining. You can also add availability zones if required. You can add more instances to your Elastic Load Balancer as the Elastic Load Balancer is running. So this marks the end of this chapter on ELB. Let's move on to the next.